G'day and welcome to my channel and welcome to this video series on making electricity from wood. Right, so I'm going to get the gasifier out of the frame just so I can seal it up and get it ready for its first test run. So for that I'm going to use my new monorail crane hoist. Um, I've just got to be careful so as I swing it out over the front here um, the whole frame is likely to tip over and that's because currently it's just sitting on uh, some temporary caster wheels um, once this gasifier is finished uh, it's going to go into a purpose-built building and uh, I'll get rid of the caster wheels and uh, it'll get bolted to the floor to stop the thing from tipping over I've just used some bags of cement and some of my scrap metal as counterweights yeah, let's see how we go The gasifier outer body or accumulator is now down to its barrel form apart from the grate. So I'm just going to start sealing the various joints and for that I'm just going to try this product here, JB Weld uh, High Temperature Gasket Sealant. I end up locking the nuts for the grate uh, by double nutting them and so I left a bit of a bit of slack in the bolts so there is the ability for a bit of movement that way the shaft is less likely to bind up and then on the floor scrapers I did the same there I lock nutted them by double nutting them same thing there, there's plenty of movement in floor scrapers, that way, yeah, they're relying on gravity for keeping contact with the floor, that way, if there's any lumps or bumps or anything like, like that, there's room for movement, that way it's less likely to get caught up. So I'm just going to seal these up, so they won't be used for a while, that's for much further down the track. Yeah. These are not tapered, these are parallel BSP threads, 
British standard pipe. So the last remaining thing on the vessel to be made airtight is this port here for the reduction thermocouple. Up to this point, this has only just been tack welded in because uh, I need to adjust this to the uh, height or to the position of the reduction tube. And for that, I need the thermocouple. And it just so happens that in the last couple of days, I've had a, a few parcels turn up. Here's my thermocouples and here's some pipe fittings. So I've just got a reduction bush here from half an inch to a quarter of an inch. And here's the thermocouple. Alright, that's not too bad. I think that probably just needs to come down a tad, just a little bit. be a little bit too much. Let's have a look. Ah, perfect. Slight change of plan here, I ended up getting rid of the black steel socket and I just cut one end off the barrel nipple here and welded it directly to the body. Um, I just wasn't quite happy with uh, how far it was sticking out and I was kind of running out of thermocouple or the length of the thermocouple was barely enough and I guess one of the things I didn't quite account for the additional length of, um, of the reducing bush here. Uh, if you have a look down there, you can actually see the uh, thermocouple poking in through the reduction tube. I'm not putting a lot of sealing on here for the top lid because, strictly speaking, it really doesn't need sealing because this is a stratified system, uh, just like the other uh, Drisler type systems are. But I'm really only sealing it for when I do the leakage test. I ended up cutting this socket down. Uh, it's because I hadn't allowed for this reducing bush and uh, it was just to get the thermocouple to go a, a little bit further down. But for the time being, uh, I don't need a thermocouple here. So I'm just gonna put the, uh, the plugs in for now. I guess I should probably explain why I end up going for the reducing bushes uh, rather than just buying a compression fitting uh, with the correct size thread. Uh, the simple reason is cost. So in most cases I needed a half inch thread but surprisingly the, um, the cost difference between a compression fitting for a quarter of an inch and half an inch is almost twice the cost. 
Whereas one of these reducing bush, I think uh, one like this, oh, for memory, I think it was a dollar fifty or something like that. So you know, so I save myself eleven dollars. All right, let's get this thing back in. Come on. So just before I put the cyclone separator all back together again, one viewer suggested that I put a bit of rubber at the bottom of the collection jar, also at the top, just to allow for expansion between the glass and the steel. So I thought, well actually, that's not a bad idea. However, what I ended up doing was I just put a bead of, of silicon at the base of the glass jar, just to allow for expansion. And if I press down on, on that, it's actually got quite a bit of give. Going to and from the condensers are these two pieces of pipe. So I'm just attaching these half sockets to them. And that's just so in future I can attach some temperature gauges um, just so I, I can see how the uh, condensers are performing all back together everything's all sealed plugged and capped so I think we're ready for our first leak test um, so the first test I'm just going to check the gasifier and the cyclone only for leaks so I've just whacked a, a cap in here and um, once that's been tested I'll connect it to the condensers and we'll also test the condensers so all I did at the top of the reactor was uh, I just made up this temporary plate which basically uh, blanks off the uh, biomass inlet and uh, I just put in this valve stem here, the sort you find on motorcycle rims or car rims. So we're going to pump in some compressed air. Here's a bit of a surprise. In each percent when I welded this with my old welder, it was giving me some voltage problems. But have a look at this. Mate, that's leaking like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I'll need to fix that. Well, I'm a bit surprised actually. Uh, somehow I managed to build a gasifier with more leaks than you can poke a stick at, which obviously wasn't a plan. Yeah, anyway, uh, but look, it is what it is, so I'm just going to have to uh, fix them up. Uh, some of the wells, uh, I guess it's no real surprise. Um, they were done with my old welder which towards the end was uh, giving me quite a lot of grief. 
But one that really surprised me, however though, is my cyclone separator. Uh, it's got a few leaks and uh, yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, like I said, there's only one thing to do and uh, that's to fix them up. Right, well, that's the leak test done. So I fixed all the leaks on the gasifier. Most of them were just uh, pinhole leaks on some of the welds. I drilled them out and welded them. That's tested all good. I fixed the leaks on the cyclone separator. That's all good now. And I've just done the leak test on the condensers and uh, they tested good. I found no leaks there, so I'm quite happy with that. Also, you'll see that the pipe work from the cyclone up to the condensers is now complete. Uh, you'll see in a little bit earlier, I made some short pieces of pipe for the top of the condensers. That has changed slightly, so here I've gone for a slightly longer pipe. That has got to do with the stainless steel flexible pipe, which I got for here. When it turned up, it wasn't quite what I expected. I thought it might have been corrugated. But anyway, it turned out it wasn't corrugated and uh, as soon as I looked at it, I could see that it was going to leak. I filled it up with water and yes, sure enough, it leaked like a sieve. So a slight change of plan there. So I ended up going for silicon rubber. Yeah, that should be okay. So I'm just going to make some wood chips. I've just gone around and collected some sticks or some larger branches. And uh, here's the chipper and the chute you see there on the trailer all that is that's the crate that the chipper came in Right here, so here's the end result. Um, they're not huge chips, but then again, I am only chipping branches. Up the far end, up here, whoops. The chips are a fair bit bigger. See the red ones? That was a really rock hard hardwood. Yeah, it did a pretty good job at chipping that. Right, so this is what I come up with for producing the charcoal. It's just the bottom of uh, the gas cylinder, which I made, or which I am currently making the filter from. So at the top here, I just made up a flange that's made out of a three mil flat bar. And the lid is uh, two mil steel. So I'm just gonna bolt that down, seal it. And then around the side here, that's the vent hole. For the volatile carbons so that will burn once it's finished I will hoist it or I will lift it out of the fire via this hook or eye bolt with a hook and then yeah basically pop that in that stops the uh, air from rushing back in and uh, igniting the charcoal I think I'll do. I'm probably not going to fit much more in.
fire's been burning for about 10 minutes and the lid is beginning to buckle. There's definitely gas coming out of there. I, I can see it being ignited by the flames. There seems to be buckling in at least three places. I wasn't expecting that. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll keep going and see what happens. All right, so we're coming up on one hour now. It's still off gassing. So we'll just keep going. Right, yo. Well, so it's out of the fire. It was in the fire for roughly an hour and 45. So I've just put that plug in just to stop the air from uh, rushing back in. Although it did appear that the air was rushing in around the lid uh, in the places where the lid had buckled. So I've just plunked the thing upside down here and I've just thrown a bit of dirt around it and uh, that seems to be working. So we'll just let it cool down and uh, yeah, we'll see how we went. Right, yo, it's the day after. This thing's cooled down, so I'm really keen to see how it's worked out. One thing is for sure and that is that it is a lot lighter. So definitely all the volatiles are gone. So let's see how we went whether there's indeed charcoal or whether there's just ash. So before I take the lid off, let's have a look at this. Uh, you can see that lid, it's bowed a fair bit under the heat, which uh, that did surprise me a little bit. And actually that's where most of the gas came out. All right, here it goes. Okay, well that doesn't look too bad. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's still bits in there that, that by and large, most of it's done. So hopefully it's enough, but I'll just have to, yeah, I'll just have to try and, and separate out the bits that, that didn't quite get there. And it seems to be, oh yeah. Yeah, so it looks like as you go down towards the bottom, that's where, oh yeah, that's pretty much, that's not even blackened at all. So it looks like, yeah, most of the heat from the fire was sort of a more concentrated towards the top of this vessel. Um, yeah, that's something I'm gonna have to have a bit of a think about. All right, well, at least we've got, we got some charcoal. Yeah, it looks pretty good too. Today's turned out to be a bit of a rainy, showery, cool sort of day, even though it is still summer here in South East Queensland. Um, I've actually got today off work, so I was supposed to be out brush cutting and wood chipping and stuff like that, but um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit too wet and slippery for that. So it looks like I get to spend the day in a shed, which I haven't been able to in months. And uh, to be honest, I'm not too upset about that. So currently we're running on solar power. So we're currently in off-grid mode. So the battery is up to about 40%, which is not bad considering it's overcast at the moment. So it looks like we're punching out just over two kilowatts of the uh, roof panels. Yep, so currently the house and shed is drawing about three and a half amps. Uh, we just dipped below 10 amps coming off the panels and 24 amps going to the battery. Yeah, so it looks like we got power to spare. So all lights are on. So I rigged up the gasifier for its first test. Um, unfortunately, my DC power supply is broken at the moment. So I've uh, borrowed the battery from the Defender. Thank you very much. And over here, we've got this sort of temporary bit, sort of rough and ready control panel. It's purely just for the uh, testing period. It's just made of plywood. And this here is a bit of a backing board of some uh, IKEA furniture. Thank you, IKEA. So I've just got a switch for the blower and a switch for the agitator with low and high speed. So at this moment, those are the only controls really that we have and need. And the fire tube is all fueled up with charcoal. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. Here's just a bit of a look at just how effective the uh, great agitator is. 
Although it needs to be said that the charcoal I got in the gasifier currently, uh, they're not big chunks. But anyway, we'll put the great agitator on. So this is low speed. So you see, even though it's very gentle, but there's lots of stuff coming down through the grate. All right, and we'll go to high speed. So you can see there's, there's plenty of stuff making its way down. Better have this on standby, you never know. I don't think I'm going to need it, but just in case. Also, the temporary flare is just outside of the roller door, so I won't set fire to the shed. That wouldn't be a good thing. Okay, well, I guess I think I think I'm ready. So the day has finally come. It'll be either triumph or defeat. Can't wait. Let's go. So I'm just going to throw that backing plate back on just to generate a bit more vacuum. See, that is unbelievable. Man, that lights within really seconds. Holy oh, shit. Whoa, what was that? Did you see that? That was a bit of a blowback. Okay. Yeah, I probably shouldn't stick my head in there. All right, let's put the cap back on. Yeah, that's sucking all right. All right, I'll tell you what, let's open that up. So I just opened taking the top there off. Oh shit, that scared the shit out of me. What the hell was that? Oh well. <laughs> so far so good. Ah. Uh, respect. Playing with fire. Alright, here we go. Don't know what that was about. charcoal all over the floor hmm okay oh well all right so what's happening down here let's see uh, I think I'll see what happened it sucked a bit of air in so there's smoke coming out and it's cool So it's been a few minutes, I've got the agitator running on low and let's have a look here and see the fire down there, it's beginning to uh, spread nicely. Um, we still don't have a flare yet, but I reckon we're getting close, let's keep going. So I'm just grabbing some of the leftover charcoal I've got, oh, just whack that in and then uh, I'll start whacking in some wood chip. I'll keep the agitator running, or keep it breathing. Alright, so there's no more charcoal, so time to go to the wood chip. It's looking good. Oh, I'm starting to drizzle it in. Whoops, not too much. Yep, that's catching all right. 
it's really starting to get hot, eh? And we still got the agitator running on low. You can see the smoke and condensate beginning to form in the cyclone collection jar. Surely we're going to have a flare soon. Ooh, I think the camera's getting hot. So I just turned off the agitator because it seemed to be going through the system too quickly. Uh, it was just churning through the charcoal. So um, I've just turned it off for the time being and uh, what I might do is just turn it on, on and off at intervals. Alright, let's have a look at the condensers. So at this point here, they're hot to touch. And they are quite hot all the way down to... They're still quite hot down here, but you, you can touch them. The condensate vessel is warm to hot. Then the second condenser tube is warm to hot at the beginning here. And as you move up the tube, you get to the top here. And uh, yeah, it's barely even warm. And the uh, plumbing on the outlet side is barely warm. That is hot. So yeah, the condensers are i definitely doing the job, no doubt about it. Okay, we've got clear. We got a flare. We got a flare at long last and now it's bloody raining. Took a while. Alright, so we've got a flare going. Uh, it's good been going for a, not long, but I just gotta figure out how to how often to operate the agitator. Also I'm just down at one fan now. So the two fans I think were just creating too much flow. Oh, there goes the flare. Yeah, it doesn't last long. All right, so I've got a sustainable flare now, it seems. That time. So I think I've figured it out. So I'm currently just running on one blower. It seems just to uh, calm things down a bit. So I think the problem I've been having is flow. So I'm running a fairly fine fuel. So I'm just gonna have to, uh, so every so often, just gotta poke it with this rod. And uh, that keeps the flare going. Yeah, I'm having a really hard time to keep this thing going. So I think it's becoming uh, fairly self-evident that the fuel is too small. So I'm having to constantly poke it to keep it going. If I don't, it uh, yeah, it, it just stops breathing. Yes, as soon as I tip any fuel down there. It just struggles to breathe. Yeah, I probably tipped it a little bit much down at that time, but now it's struggling to breathe, and uh, yeah, I've got to make sure I. There you go. You can see it's actually drawing the flames down through the hole that I just poked. Yeah, so I think I'll probably conclude the first test here. It's just too hard to keep it going. You know, I'm. Uh, I've got to constantly stand here and poke it. Let's see what ended up collecting in the condensate. Whoa. Okay, now that is a surprise. All right, so I actually ended up just tipping that water in this, because um, I'd like to measure just how much we actually ended up collecting. So there couldn't be too much more left, surely not. Uh, looks like that's about it. So what we ended up collecting here was about half a litre. But 
one thing that really did surprise me was there appears to be some soot or crap. Feels like tar. Yeah, that's got to be tar in the water. So obviously while I was stuffing around with the thing and the, and the thing wasn't flowing properly, obviously uh, I think I was, I was producing quite a lot of tar. That's evidently. And uh, that's made it through the condensers, so God only knows what the inside of the condensers is looking like. But look at that. Mate, that is tar, right? So there's a tiny bit of water in the bottom of the cyclone collection jar, but it's not much of all. There doesn't seem to be much in the way of charcoal dust. So whether that's good or bad, not really sure at this stage, but yeah, it's um, it's not even worthwhile uh, emptying that out. It's uh, it's such a minuscule amount. Well, that pretty much concludes test number one. Um, it wasn't a complete failure, um, but then again, to be brutally honest, it wasn't exactly the success that I was hoping for either. But anyway, at least we did make some flammable gas, if only for short periods, but it was flammable nonetheless. It appears that it was just very difficult to keep this thing going. Um, the longer I ran it, the more difficult it became. And no amount of poking with my pokey stick here was uh, able to keep the thing breathing properly. At, at times, I think it just wasn't hot enough and it just wasn't breathing properly. I could definitely tell that when I poked it with my pokey stick, you could tell that it started breathing again. So it would appear that probably my fuel is too fine. So I may have to uh, look at going over to a more sort of chunkier fuel. I thought we might just have a look inside and see what things look like. Oh, that's interesting. Take a look at this. So just looking at the back of the hatch door here, look at that pattern there. To me, that would indicate that it's been drawing in air around the gasket, because otherwise you wouldn't be getting that. That's, that's where air's been flowing in. I'm pretty certain of that. Because what is on the back of the door, yeah, that's tar. Man, this thing's been producing tar like there's no tomorrow. Right, moving on. So just having a look inside the gasifier and I'm really surprised to see that all the charcoal has piled up in the middle of the floor scrapers. It would appear that the floor scrapers haven't been doing their job and if you have a look at the floor here, I'll just have a look here. The floor is full of dust. So the floor scrapers haven't been rotating. I wonder if that's also the case for the great agitator. I'll turn, I'll turn it on and see what happens. Okay, we'll select low speed. That's interesting, it's not moving. All right, so the coupling is turning, but the shaft isn't. So I just wonder, has it seized? Let's see if I can... No, no, it... Mm. When the floor scraper turns, does the shaft turn though? Man, that's dusty as. It almost looks as if the floor scraper is also slipping on the shaft. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Don't tell me everything's slipping here. Oh, okay. I think we might let that go for now. Uh, I'll need to pull this apart and see what has happened here, but. Oh well, that leaves me with a few unanswered questions. Maybe the fuel isn't too fine after all. Maybe the reason why it was struggling to breathe was that the great 
agitator wasn't working because if you can't agitate the grain, uh, strictly speaking, you know, it's uh, everything's just sitting still. And the only way I was able to get stuff through the grain was by was by using my pokey stick here. And uh, obviously, that's no way to run a gasifier. So, well, first thing first, I need to sort that out, and that should be relatively simple. Once I sort that out, maybe do another test with a fine fuel, just to be sure. I don't know. I'll have to have a, a bit of thing about that. Right, well, there's plenty to do. I've got the battery from the Defender sitting on the floor over there. I've got the charger on it, charging it back up. I think I'd better get that back in the Defender. Right here, guys. Well, I think um, I think we'll wrap it up here. Yeah, I've still got a, quite a bit of work to do. Till next time, cheers. Thanks for watching.